Now we're going to start our paper trail. And the state does require a minimum amount of documents on every transaction. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read a law that states why we must complete the document. Then we'll complete the document. And throughout the course, I'm going to keep a running total of all the documents that you're going to complete on every transaction. And at the end of the course, I'm going to show you a list of all the documents and you can basically tape that list to your desk or possibly frame it and place the list on the wall. So you're going to know the minimum documents that you're required to complete on every transaction. First, I want to read the law on our first document, then we'll complete that document. Ohio law requires every retail and wholesale sale of a motor vehicle to be preceded by a written contract that contains all the agreements of the parties and shall be signed by the buyer and seller. I want to repeat that. Ohio law requires every retail and wholesale sale of a motor vehicle to be preceded by a written contract that contains all the agreements of the parties and shall be signed by the buyer and a seller. The first required document we're, we're going to cover is a retail contract or what we'll call the bill of sale. For the rest of the course, I'm going to call this our mandatory bill of sale. And here you can see a sample retail contract or bill of sale. And you can purchase these at dealer auctions, or if you're using a dealer management software program, you'll easily be able to print these up. And we'll discuss a DMS program later in your course. Or, you know, the state actually does allow you to create your own bill of sale as long as you have the following information on the bill of sale. You're going to need the type of motor vehicle being sold to the buyer, the vehicle identification number, the mileage appearing on the odometer at the vehicle of the vehicle at the time of the sale, whether the mileage is accurate, the sales price of the vehicle, and if applicable, any amount paid down by the buyer, any document fees charged by the dealer, the amount credited to the buyer for any trade-in. If the dealer is financing the vehicle, you must also disclose the following information in writing. The amount of any finance charge, the amount charged for any motor vehicle insurance, a statement of the types of insurance provided by the policy or policies, and the amount of any other charges for that purpose, also the net balance from the buyer and the terms of the payment and the balance as well. I want you to be very aware, any person in violation of Ohio's motor vehicle contract law can be found guilty of a misdemeanor of the fourth degree. Once again, failure to complete a bill of sale on a transaction could lead to you being charged with a misdemeanor or fourth degree felony. So our first mandatory document that you must complete on every transaction is your bill of sale. Remember, you got a bill of sale on a buy and a bill of sale on a sell, whether it's a retail sale to a customer or a wholesale sale to another dealer. Bill of sale on every transaction. Next, I want to cover the next required document. But before I do, I want to read a very important law to you. And it says in your manual, if you're following along in the manual that you downloaded at the beginning of the course, federal and Ohio law requires you state the mileage of any vehicle sold at the time of the sale of the vehicle. Federal law exempts some vehicles. However, Ohio requires mileage reporting on every vehicle, regardless of age. With the exception of a vehicle with more than 16,000 pounds, Ohio requires mileage reporting on every vehicle, regardless of age. And that's going to lead us to our next required document that you see on the screen there. This is an odometer disclosure statement. So let's take a look at this firm form. The first thing you'll need to be aware of when you are completing dealer documents is that the transferor is the seller and the transferee is the buyer. And there are some forms that do not designate the difference between the two. So remember, the transferor is the seller and the transferee is the buyer. So first at the top left, you're going to need to enter your name and your dealership name. And when you're completing all documents, you'll always enter your name and your dealership name. So so if your name's Sarah Doe and you own Ohio Motors, from now on out, you're going to basically enter Sarah Doe, DBA, Ohio Motors. You might just think of it as your dealership name is your new last name when you're completing dealer documentation. So always enter your dealership name after your name. You're going to enter the mileage reading on the vehicle. And I want to explain these very, very important check boxes that you see next. Sometimes you could purchase an older vehicle to resell, and maybe that vehicle only has five digits on the odometer. It might read 23,000 miles, but you're pretty sure the actual mileage is 123,000 or 223,000, but you suspect the odometer has rolled over. Then you're going to check the box number one because the odometer exceeds 
mechanical limits. So if you suspect, say for example, the odometer has rolled over, you'll check box number one. Or if you've got a vehicle where the dash is not working and you can't verify the mileage, you would check box one. Every once in a while, however, you may be in the process of purchasing a vehicle from someone. And let's say, let's just say for example, you're buying a 1970 Chevelle from some guy and he states that the old odometer quit working at 80,000 miles and he replaced it with a new odometer that reads 30,000. Well, that's what we call an odometer discrepancy. That's an odometer that is incorrect and it's referred to as a discrepancy. So in a scenario like that, you would need to check the box number two to notify all future buyers of that odometer discrepancy. And by the way, every state's title is required to have by federal law to have those two boxes on the title. So you want to check those corresponding boxes on the title to that vehicle as well. Then you'll enter your name, your dealership name, dealership address and day and signature. And then you're going to have the purchaser enter their address. And I want to bring your attention to the very bottom of this form. See where it says receipt of copy acknowledged. Your customer must sign this stating they have received a copy. So remember, as we talk about records in the course, you always want to make two copies of every document. One copy is going to go into your records and you'll always give a copy of all documents to the customer. And this form actually requires the customer to sign it, acknowledging that they have received copies. You're going to complete a form BMV 3724 on every motor vehicle transaction. Some clerk of courts will allow the odometer disclosure to be completed on a title that has odometer disclosure, but most are going to require a separate odometer disclosure statement, or they might even have their own county disclosure statement. So you'll need to check with your clerk of courts on that. With that being said, I know like Franklin County, they've got their own odometer disclosure statement. Uh, so after you're granted your dealer's license, be sure to contact your local clerk court office to see if they have any specific county odometer disclosure statements. And if they do not, then you can just use the one that we just filled out here. So to keep a running total of those required documents on every transaction, we're going to have a bill of sale and an odometer disclosure statement. And we'll have a list of those documents you can view at the very end of the course. Odometer tampering. Resetting, disconnecting, or altering a vehicle's odometer to conceal the true mileage is known as odometer tampering. And obviously, it's illegal for anyone to engage in odometer tampering or sell a vehicle knowing the odometer has been altered without informing the purchaser. The following actions regarding odometers are strictly forbidden by Ohio law. Fraudulent devices. No person shall advertise for sale, sell, use, or install any part of a vehicle or an odometer, any device which causes the odometer to register any mileage other than the actual mile, miles being driven. And what, what am I talking about here? Up till a couple of years ago, you could go online and you could order what was called an odometer rip. And this device it could be easily installed on a vehicle. And if you went out and drove 5,000 miles, the odometer rip would keep the mileage lower than the actual mileage being driven. So if you drove 5,000 miles, the odometer might only show 100 miles. And then when you wanted to sell the vehicle, you just take the rip off and the odometer would start functioning correctly again. Well, you know, the Ohio legislature said no way. And you can never place a fraudulent device on a vehicle, which makes it read a lower mileage than the true mileage being driven. Disconnected odometers. No person shall operate a motor vehicle on any roadway in Ohio when the odometer on the vehicle is not connected or not functioning. Transfer. No person shall transfer a motor vehicle if they know the odometer of the vehicle has been changed, altered, tampered with, or disconnected to enter to indicate a lower mileage without disclosing those facts to the purchaser in writing. Let's talk about this one. Failure to provide statement. No owner shall fail to provide the true and complete odometer disclosures for every motor vehicle transaction. Odometer tampering penalties. A first offense is a fourth degree felony, which carries a penalty of six to 18 months in jail and up to a $5,000 fine. A second offense is a third degree felony, which carries a penalty of one to five years in jail and up to a $10,000 fine. So obviously don't mess with odometers. Failure to comply with odometer disclosure and odometer tampering laws could lead to the revocation of your dealer's license along with extensive penalties and possible jail time. Before we talk about our next required document, I want you to be aware the legal age to sign legally binding contracts, such as all the documentation required in a motor vehicle transaction, is 18 years of age. So your customer must be at least 18 years of age to purchase a vehicle from you. 
in a very worst case scenario, let's say you sold a motorcycle to like a 17 year old kid. He signed all the paperwork, maybe paid you $5,000 in cash. And then this 17 year old could drive that motorcycle down the street, total it out. And then the law would allow that 17 year old to drag that damaged motorcycle back to your dealership. And you would have to take the damaged motorcycle and give the $5,000 back to the customer because you completed a sale with someone that was not old enough to sign legally binding contracts, which would basically give you, the dealer, absolutely no legal recourse during this transaction. So you must always ensure that anyone purchasing a vehicle from you is at least 18 years of age. However, you could run into a scenario, let's say for example, you've got a mom and a dad, they're bringing in their 17 year old daughter and they wanna purchase a vehicle for her and it's a big birthday present, that's fine, and they want her name to be on the title. If you run into a scenario like this, and a minor is involved in that motor vehicle transaction, you must complete our next required document, which is called a minor consent form, like you see right here. A minor consent form will need to be completed on any motor vehicle transaction that includes a minor. So for reference, so far, our required documents that you're gonna complete on every transaction include a bill of sale, odometer disclosure statement, and if a minor is involved, the minor consent form and as I stated earlier, I will show you a list of all the required documents at the end of the course. And I do believe that's gonna help you maintain your compliance when you get your dealer's license. Next, we're going to delve into our records. You're gonna be starting a very extensive paper trail when you obtain your Ohio used motor vehicle dealer license. The most important piece of office equipment you're gonna need is going to be a copy machine or scanner and you're going to create and store copies of every single document related to the purchase and sale of every vehicle you acquire. If you are thinking about throwing away a document that relates to the operation of your dealership, don't throw it away. Make a copy of it. Also, for some reason, if you do decide to close your dealership, and I don't think you will do that, but if you ever go out of business, the BMV does want you to keep records for three years after you have went out of business. So you will have to keep all records a minimum of three years after you go out of business. Now, with that being said, there are some documentations, there are some documents as well, such as electronic title applications, that odometer disclosure statement that I showed you just a moment ago, and the federal forms that we're gonna cover later on in the course will have to be kept a minimum of five years. All records must be kept a minimum of three years. Federal law requires some records to be kept for five years. And I wanna kinda of go down a quick list of documents that you must keep at your dealership. And we have covered a few of these documents, but we will cover all of them throughout your dealer training course. Ohio dealers are required to keep at minimum the following records, either, either via paper or electronically for all vehicles purchased, leased, and sold. A purchase agreement for each vehicle sold, which includes a description of the vehicle, the name and address of the purchaser, the sales price, the odometer reading, and the dealer permit number. Remember, that's our, our bill of sale. Front and back copies of each title, and also that's gonna have the name and address of the previous owner, along with the vehicle identification number and the title. Any type of lease or installment or security agreements, and we are gonna cover financing extensively later on in your dealer training course. You're also gonna need odometer disclosure statements for each vehicle, out-of-state inspection forms for vehicles that have out-of-state titles. And I'm gonna show you that form here in just a little while. Any power of attorneys, dealer assignments, a record of your temporary tag sold on each vehicle. If a temporary tag has been placed on the vehicle, then the purchaser's signed document stating the purchaser has not been previously issued during the current registration could also be stored as well. I'm gonna show you those docs later on and make it as easy as possible for you to maintain your record requirements. So. A couple of other documents you need to be aware of. Number one is your original Ohio Motor Vehicle Dealer License. And remember, that has to be displayed prominently. List of your salespersons. I'll talk about that here in just a little bit. A list of temporary tags sold. Remember, you have to have that I-9 employment eligibility form for each person on the license and each future employee. Any local licenses that are required by your county or your city where the dealership is located. And in addition to the records required to be maintained under Ohio law, you must also have certain federal records for five years, and we will cover all those as well, including your Federal Trade Commission Buyer's Guide, copies of cash reporting forms, odometer disclosure statements for any vehicles that aren't covered under Ohio law, uh, written Federal Trade Commission red flags policies. We'll talk about all this, and I'll make it as simple as possible, plus any forms that relate to any federal financing laws and OFAC filings as well. I want you to be aware that when you are 
Granted an Ohio dealer's license, you are given the BMV the right at any time to come in and take a look at your records in what is known as an official records inspection. Your records must be kept ready to produce for inspection by a BMV investigator or any law enforcement official at all times. During a records inspection, the BMV investigator personnel may arrive unannounced during your hours of operation. If either an owner, partner, or licensed salesperson is not staffing the dealership during the posted hours of operation, that could result in administrative board action to suspend or even revoke the dealer's license. So as I've said a couple of times, you've got to staff the dealership during your posted hours. Dealership staffs, dealerships must be staffed during the posted hours. That is Ohio law. All records shall be available for reasonable inspection within 10 business days of a request as well. So please do keep that in mind. Next, I want to show you some other things you can do on the dealer online services, which we registered for just a little while ago when you applied for your license in the previous unit. Remember, we created that account, which we also call the dealer portal. So remember, we covered that online application system extensively when you created account, an account and applied for your license. Well, there are several other things that you can do in your dealer licensing account once you become a licensed motor vehicle dealer. And I want to show you a couple of those right now. When you log into your dealer portal, after you've gotten your license, you're going to be able to renew your dealer license when it comes due. You can also renew your plates. You can order additional or replacement dealer plates or stickers. You can apply for salesperson's licenses. When you hire someone as a salesperson, you can now easily apply through your online account. You can terminate salesperson's licenses as well. And I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. One thing we will delve into later on in the course is your temporary tags. And those are those little paper license plates you're placing on the back of a vehicle you sold. You'll easily be able to report those through your online dealer portal. You can order new temporary tags and you can even review the temporary tags that you have in the system. And we will cover those temporary tags extensively later in the course. So with that being said, when you are ready to access, I already showed you how to log on here and that you're going to go to autodealers.ohio.gov. And I want you to be aware on this web page, there's a lot of really helpful information for you. The official BMV dealer licensing website at autodealers.ohio.gov has a lot of information for you. Uh, you'll be able to download all of your forms. You'll even be able to log into the Ohio Title Gateway which, and order titles, which I'll show you how to do that from the comfort of your dealership here in just a little bit. And we'll cover that process extensively later in the course. You can find important announcements uh, and things like that, and the Motor Vehicle Dealer Board schedule. And I'm going to cover the Motor Vehicle Board with you in just a few moments. So you can also read about temporary tag requirements and things like that. But when you log right back in, remember how you logged in there, you're going to click the login link right there. And then you'll enter your email and your password that you created earlier in the course. And then you're going to see this screen right here. This is your dealer portal. I want to cover some important functions of the dealer portal because this will basically allow you to operate your dealership from the comfort of your dealership. Here at the top left, you see the dealer licensing link where you can renew your license. You can order replacement dealer plates. At the top right there, you can see your salesperson licensing section where you can apply for, transfer, and renew salesperson licenses for your employees. You can also notify the BMV when you terminate a salesperson. And we'll talk about salesperson's uh, licensing extensively in the very next section. Over here at the bottom left, you can see the temporary tag section where you can order your temporary tags, report temporary tags, void temporary tags, find out your temporary tag inventory, and we'll cover those tags extensively later in the course. In the middle bottom there, you see contact information. So remember, if you ever change anything, such as your phone number, your hours, your owners, you need to notify the BMV within 15 days, and you can do that right through your dealer account. Also here, here at the bottom right, see where it says security link? You can click on this link and actually add employees to your account so they can have access to the dealer portal as well. But before I show you how to accomplish this, you'll need to be aware that since you are the administrator of this account, some services on the dealer portal are free and some services have costs involved. So let's say, for example, you want to renew your license or order replacement dealer plates or renew or transfer a salesperson's license or maybe even order temporary tags. There's a charge for those services. But let's say you just want to report a temporary tag or void attempt tag or maybe just change contact information. There's no charge for those services. 
So before you assign one of your employees, you're going to uh, a role, you'll need to determine whether they have what is called a money role or a non-money role. So a money role will allow somebody to order dealer plates and renew licenses and do services that have charges involved. Maybe you want to assign that to a general manager. Now, maybe you'll want to assign a salesperson like a non-money role, which would allow them to just maybe report temporary tags and things like that. So you're, you're going to be able to assign them a money role or a non-money role, and you might have a salesperson just going to report temporary permits and things like that, which would be a non-money role. So you'll just click Add New right there, and you can put the email address, first and last name of the employee, and you'll need to enter whether they have a money role or a non-money role. And then you can easily, on the next page, find out all the different persons that you have actually assigned roles to as well. So it's very easy to stay on top of that. At any time, if you want to add users, you can certainly do that by clicking on that security tag right there. So this is a great website. And later on, when we delve into those temporary tags, I'm going to show you extensively how to print them up, how to order them, and also how to keep track of the ones that you have on file as well. So hopefully this information is very, very helpful for you. Next, before we end this portion of the unit, I want to talk about the important roles and responsibilities of the Ohio Motor Vehicle Dealer Board. The dealer board meets in Columbus, and they have oversight over our industry, so you definitely need to be aware of the responsibilities of the board. The Ohio Motor Vehicle Dealers Board conducts hearings regarding the issuance, suspension, and revocation of Ohio dealer licenses. They also interpret Ohio motor vehicle dealer laws, and they create new rules for dealers. The Motor Vehicle Dealer Board consists of 11 members and is actually part of the Ohio Department of Public Safety. One member is associated with the Bureau of Motor Vehicles and serves as the executive officer of the board. And the other 10 members are appointed by the Ohio governor and then are confirmed by the Ohio Senate. Ohio law requires the board includes one member to have sold used motor vehicles, one member to have sold recreational vehicles, three that have been engaged in the sale of new motor vehicles, two must have been engaged in the leasing of motor vehicles, and three members must be from the general public, public never having sold retail vehicles in the state of Ohio. So the makeup of the board is quite diverse. One important role of the board is to interpret Ohio motor vehicle dealer laws and create or revise rules. The main section of Ohio law is what's called the administrative code. And the administrative code contains several thousands of pages of state laws. And every once in a while, a board will see a section of the administrative code that needs to be changed, so they'll create a new rule. And this goes into the most current set of the state laws, which is called the revised code. And the board normally meets about six times a year. They meet in Columbus and they'll post any proposed revisions on the dealer licensing section website. When you're a dealer, you may want to testify or submit written comments to the board when you see a proposed rule. Whether you support the rule or whether you oppose the rule, the board will consider your testimony when voting on the rule. Another very important aspect of the board is to conduct dealer license suspension or denial hearings. If your dealer's license or even a salesperson's license has been denied, suspended, or revoked, it's a democratic process and you can file an appeal with the Motor Vehicle Dealer Board. The appeal must be filed within writing, in writing within 30 days of the denial or the revocation or the suspension. If the appeal is not filed within 30 days, the order is final. So if you've ever had your license suspended, which I hope is something that never ever happens to you, you can appeal the suspension and testify in front of the board. If you want to read any proposed rules, you can visit the dealer licensing section website you see right here. And at the top right, you can view any proposed rules, changes for dealers, and scroll down to the bottom and click on the dealer board meeting dates, and you'll easily be able to find the schedule of meetings for the board. And if you ever get a chance to attend a motor vehicle dealer board meeting in Columbus, they meet at the Department of Public Safety building just west of downtown, right off I-70, I'm sure you will find those meetings very, very educational. I've had the opportunity to attend these meetings, and you will learn a lot. I strongly encourage you, if you ever get a chance, to attend a board meeting. And you can see the schedule right there at the autodealers.ohio.gov website. Let's do our Unit 2 review. In Unit 2, we've learned that the dealer license must be displayed prominently. The dealer must operate ethically. A dealer license can be revoked or suspended. Got to have financial responsibility on all vehicles. You need a retail agreement or retail contract on all transactions. 
You need a written odometer disclosure on every transaction. Odometer tampering is strictly forbidden. Sales to minors must be signed by a parent or guardian on that minor consent form. You're going to maintain records. Most dealer record retention is three years. Electronic title application records, federal forms, and odometer disclosure forms must be kept a minimum of five years. Records can be stored digitally or via paper. Now, with that being said, I want to give you that reminder again. Anytime you need to review any of this content, you can go to ohiodealer.com and click on the course videos there. And right then at that time, you can easily fast forward through to the content that you want to review. And once again, I hope that you're finding all this information very helpful.